So I'm going to do a dream interpretation video. Oh, here's my kitty. She's joining me today. So I recently had a dream, and I haven't quite decided where it came from, whether it's my subconscious or my conscious. It seemed a little bit, um, it was cryptic. There was definitely symbology. Um, it was definitely trying to communicate something meaningful to me. But it, it seemed like a dream from my subconscious, if I'm being honest. Cat got annoyed that I was talking and left. But the timing of the stream was interesting because literally the night before, like right before going to sleep, I had been praying, you know, for guidance on a number of things. I've mentioned before that, you know, my faith has shifted quite a bit. You know, I went from like Bible thumper, you know, the Christian Bible is the inspired and errant word of God to, hey, maybe some stuff was left out, maybe there's a lot of mistranslation, maybe we weren't fully understanding, you know, what he meant in this context. And, oh, would you look at that? We don't even call the Christ or the Messiah by the correct name. We have this weird, like, Greek-slash-westernized name, Jesus, which came from... It, 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 it went through, like, a number of uh, transliterations in order to become Jesus. And so I was praying and I was like, I don't, like, I don't know what to call you. I've prayed this a lot recently because it really bothers me. I'm like, are you Yeshua or are you Yehoshua? Does it matter? Do you care what we call you? Because you're literally like the I am, meaning that everything that is, is you and you are everything that is. So does it even really matter? And then I also asked him, what do you think about this Paul character? You know, the Apostle Paul that never actually met you. He, apparently he met you on the road to Damascus. Did he actually meet you on the road to Damascus? Is there actually any validity to the things that he said? Or is he just some random guy that went through some random spiritual psychosis and made up a bunch of crap and then Christians were like, that sounds good, let's put that in scripture, you know? Like, I've had a lot of questions like this lately. And then grappling, I was grappling with this idea of unconditional love in the car while praying. Um, and like, you know, in the situations that I'm in, am I called to continue going through abusive situations in the name of like love or, and it's not physically abusive, by the way, I'm safe. We're good. Or is like that idea of love, not even really love. And it's just enabling and like, what am I supposed to do? And like very much trying to assert my will, like, this is what I want. This is what I want from the universe. I need help. I need an escape plan like how can I do this and still be within whatever your will is and can I what is your will what do you want from me wow like just this is the types of prayers that I was praying and then also um like am I being led astray am I am I being you know drawn in closer to you with a lot of these things that I'm, I've been exploring with my mind am I being deceived like or is the rest of the world been deceived for ever and we're just now awakening like I like I ah. I think the main thing was that I was kind of hoping that God would give me a sign of some kind to follow so that I would know without a doubt that I was on the right track kind of a thing and then I went to bed that night and I had this dream now the dream starts out with all these jars and I make tinctures a lot so you know it wasn't an unfamiliar sight but it was a plant that I wasn't used to seeing in these, it was everything in all of the jars was the same, and it was like two or three. Um, it looked like clover or thistle flowers, you know, those purple ones with like the little grouping of the teeny tiny little. But anyway, like a clover flower, and all the jars were full of this clear liquid with these flowers that were bleeding bluish purple into the tincture, you know, and they were all at various stages of the process. That means that there were all different shades of blue, purple, and clear, um, depending on how long they had been sitting in the tincture. And there were just shelves lined with these tinctures. The flowers very much reminded me of the flower of life formation that you see in that sacred geometry. The color purple, you know, it reminds me of like the crown or the third eye chakra. Because it's that, it's that blue indigo slash purple color. And I just remember feeling like we are the vessels, we are the jars, and this is what is inside of us, and we all have it inside of us, right? We all have this unconditional love, this um, this truth, this light, this revealing. It exists inside all of us, but we're all in different stages 
of revealing what's inside of us. And then I remember feeling sudden grief, and all of a sudden I was over top of Yeshua in his tomb where he was lying dead, just grieving over the fact that he was dead. And he sat up like nothing had happened, and he took my hand, and we walked, and I follow, followed him hand in hand to this beautiful green valley. It was the most vivid, beautiful landscape I had ever seen. And with my hand still in his, he grabbed my other hand in his other hand so that we were facing each other. And then he lifted both of my arms up to the sky. We both looked up to the sky with our with both of our arms outstretched, still holding hands facing each other. But he was like holding my wrists up and my hands were open to the sky. And I remember we were just we were standing there for the longest time with my hands up to the air. I began to feel very rooted and grounded like you would if you were doing like mountain pose or like a yoga pose, right? And my arms started to get tired and I started to pull my arms down and he pulled them right back up. And as he did that, and I pushed through that burn of having my arms up for so long, hearts, like emoji hearts, very vivid red, but very much emoji hearts, little cartoon hearts, poured out of our hands upward so high into the sky and then rained back down onto the earth. I can't, I can't with this. And the timing, like my goodness. To me, that was confirmation that I've been heading in the right direction. I felt such a peace and, and a knowing. And just that overall feeling that I'm not alone on this journey. I've never been alone on this journey. And that during that time of my faith kind of shifting, it that death of Christ was represented in the death of of certain beliefs that were limiting and holding me back and actually had absolutely nothing to do with Yeshua. It had everything to do with a controlling political system, uh, an oppressive system that had snuck their corrupt ideas into the scriptures. And him grabbing me by the hand and leading me is like, you have been led this entire time. I have been leading you. And you know, you, you put your arms out to heaven to receive and at some point you got tired and tried to give up, but I, I wouldn't let you give up because you have a purpose here. Um, and it, that the heart's coming out, to me that's like the expression of what I've received. So I, I receive energy from heaven, from God, from source, and then I am supposed to express that out, share it out with the rest of humanity. And not as like, Again, with the jars, right? Multiple jars, so many jars. They're all the same and they're all in different phases of that process, that transforming process of becoming like a medicine, a tincture, right? And so I'm just one of many of these jars. So I'm not like, the dream wasn't to be like, you are called out from everybody else and you're super special, some kind of like special priestess or prophetess or something like that. It was the whole point of those jars in the beginning was like, no, there's more like you. There's a lot more like you. It's, it's actually going to start becoming a lot more common, especially as people evolve, you know, and the, the medicine in them begins to grow uh, in potency. But the whole thing was that, you know, I have been divinely guided. I don't have to be afraid. Um, I don't have to be afraid of that spirit of deception that's been a, a shrouding humanity because, you know, I've been led and divinely guided. Like, it's not coming from me. It's, But again, this felt like a dream that was coming from my subconscious. So you have to ask yourself the tough questions, right? So if it's coming from my subconscious, is my subconscious giving me this in order to pacify me, to make me feel comfortable, to make me feel at ease? Do I have a right to feel that comfort? Do you know what I mean? Like, so... But the thing is, is like when I saw Jesus's face, Yeshua's face, it seemed genuine. It seemed authentic. It didn't seem like an aspect of myself. It, it felt like Yeshua was actually there. So it could have been more of a download from the superconscious speaking to my subconscious. So basically source was reprogramming like I do when I lucid dream and I change my dreams. It was source that was changing my subconscious dreams in order to reflect new programming, better programming.